What is up you guys? Welcome back to the channel and another video. Today is a pretty exciting day because we're gonna be making our own custom oil cooler for our N54-335 right here. Um, I'm pretty excited about this. I've never tried anything like this, so I guess we'll see how it goes. But the main reason for this is because these two factory oil cooler lines were actually leaking. Um, and to get new replacement factory lines for the stock cooler was close to 300 bucks. So I figured I'd spend a little extra and make a custom oil cooler that should be front mounted so it'll get extra airflow and the core is actually bigger than the stock one. So let's go over the parts that I bought for this specifically and um, I'll definitely put all the parts in the description if you guys wanna try this yourself. But let's see what parts we got. All right, so starting it off, we have a Mishimoto 19 core oil cooler. Um, this is just a basically universal cooler with dash 10 a on lines on the top right here. So we have the cooler, um, cooler core. This should fit nicely in the front behind the kidney grills. It should get extra airflow up there. Then we have this VTT block off plate. This is for your factory oil cooler housing. That also has dash 10 AM lines. Um, and we also got an oil cooler gasket as well. We have 10 feet of vibrant um, dash 10 um, oil compatible line. That should be good for about 325 degrees which uh, the car should never get that high. So we should be good there. Then we have an Earl's remote mount thermostat. This is a 180 degree thermostat. So close to the factory one, I think, but this one actually cracks open at 160 degrees and then it's fully open at 180. And then we have a bunch of assortments of JEGS um, AN fittings. These are all dash 10 as well. We have some straight pieces, 290s for the block off plate and um, different fittings. And I'll go over that more when we start assembling everything. But we are gonna make our own lines, which should be interesting. So now that we got all the parts, we actually need to remove the stock cooler first. Um, I'm gonna fix the engine hoist so the engine's sitting a little bit more level. And then we'll actually just pull this stock cooler out, which is pretty simple. It's just three E12s on the housing. And then there's a few bolts down in the fender. I should also note the car is already torn apart. So this is gonna be a little easier for me to access the oil cooler, but there's really nothing big standing in your way of removing the factory oil cooler. Um, just this front fender liner basically covers the factory cooler and then maybe your front bumper if you want better access, but that really should be it to remove the stock cooler. So anyways, you guys, let's dive right in. We're gonna pull the factory cooler off and then we'll go over installing the new custom cooler and making AN lines. All right, guys, so we got the thermostat delete plate uh, bolted up. I had to get new bolts because this one's stripped, so I just got longer ones that use all the threads. It really holds it in there good. And then uh, I've labeled this so I don't forget. So this is the outside um, from the engine to the cooler, and then this will be the return side with the eye, the in. And then uh, we got it basically just like a rough mock up here because we're gonna have to start cutting hoses. So we have two 90s on here and then uh, it'll run straight into the thermostat, which we have over here. And so this is labeled for you. So in from engine, out to cooler, and then out, in from cooler, out to engine. So it'll sit something like this. And then uh, we have the hose running right to the cooler. So you make sure want, you wanna put some tape on there um, because you don't want it to fray when you cut it because it'll make it really difficult to put the fitting on. So I've just taped it with some electrical tape and then I basically drew a line uh, right where I want the fitting to go. So that thermostat will sit somewhere like right there. 
and we'll probably build a bracket off that little engine or uh, the little support bar that runs right here. So we're gonna start cutting these. There's a lot of different ways to cut them. Um, there's, on Summit Racing, they make a tool. It's like a big uh, pair of chain cutters, kind of looks like. Um, I got a hacksaw. I've seen this work for people. So I just bought a pretty cheap hacksaw. I think it was like 20 bucks. And then I also have these plates. I'll put the description in, but they basically go on a vise and they'll hold your fittings without scratching them. And they will also hold your hose so you can cut it. So cutting's really important. Make sure you cut it as uh, straight as you can and the fittings shouldn't leak. Um, so we're gonna cut this right here because that's where I've measured the fitting to go. And then the routing will do something like this or we'll run it around and then down through there and then out uh, kind of under the headlight and then the cooler should sit right here. So I'm gonna pull this off, we'll put it in the vise and then uh, we're gonna just cut that right there and we'll make our first hose. Alright guys, we got all the hoses made, everything hooked up. Um, I tried to show as much as I could as far as making the hoses. It's pretty straightforward though. You just measure them, cut them, and then if you use a, um, I found out if you use an angle grinder or something, it actually works better than the hacksaw I tried to use because the hacksaw frayed it really bad and the angle grinder didn't. So. Use the angle grinder to cut the hoses, and then you slide this on, um, push and twist this on, so this separates from here, and then you use a vise to hold the bottom part, like this. Um, I'll put a, or a link in the description where I got these, so they don't mar up your parts. And then uh, you basically just push the top fitting in and twist it, and then that's it, rinse and repeat, and you have yourself a full oil cooler. So we end up routing the hoses by the frame rail, and then up and around the back of the headlight, and then to the thermostat, which is not mounted yet. I'll have to make a mount for that. And then hooked it up to the oil plate adapter, and that's about it. So now all we have to do is fill it with oil, and then we'll start the car and basically make sure nothing leaks, and that's how you make yourself a custom oil cooler. you guys well there you have it our oil cooler project is all complete and it runs fantastically so we have everything the VTT block off plate is in secured everything's good there um, our 90 degree fittings from Jegs uh, anodized black of course and then we have that running through our vibrant uh, nylon braided hose down to our Earl's thermostat and then these are two just straight uh, a dash 10 AN fittings going into that and then out and then we have it running around underneath the headlight. And then two 90 degree fittings um, attached to the oil cooler right here. And then the cooler core is just sitting right there. And it looks awesome with the front mount and gives it a really mean look with that cooler up there. And we also added a Burger Motorsports. Um, it's like a billet aluminum uh, oil filter housing cap. So one, it makes getting your oil filter out easier because you can just put a socket on there and it looks way better with everything going on. So overall, it wasn't that hard of a project. Um, I think the total price came in around 500 bucks. And you know, like I said, the oil cooler lines by themselves are 300. So I figured I'd go to something bigger to get a little bit more cooling capacity out of it. It does add a lot more oil capacity too. So it adds about a quart and a half, I think, additional oil. Uh, from what it used to take. So overall, not a bad project, not a bad price for what you get. Um, the performance is great. So with the Sport oil cooler that I had before, uh, my oil temps would normally average 250. Um, 
they'd sit around 250 so with this new upgraded cooler after after beating on the car and driving aggressively it sits around 230 so we knocked off 20 degrees there and um, it just performs flawlessly and the car still heats up uh, quick to operating temp so that's really nice too so overall not a bad project I will uh, put all the parts I used in the description below uh, so if you guys want to replicate you can I would also recommend not trying to use a saw to cut and lines it was a bad idea and I don't don't know why I thought it would work but it just frayed the nylon and I couldn't get the fittings over it and nothing worked out right so I definitely recommend like an angle grinder like I showed in the video um, that worked way better and it kind of like cauterized the nylon so it didn't fray and it made putting the fittings together way easier so hopefully you guys enjoyed that video um, it was a good project and I'm glad I did it so if you guys want to repeat again I'll put the stuff in the description for you to build your own oil cooler and I'd say it's 10 out of 10 worth it um, performance wise and look wise because it does look pretty good with everything set up um, and the relocated inlets look good too so engine bay is looking pretty good right now so again hopefully you guys enjoyed that video leave a like comment if you have any questions at all and don't forget to subscribe and i will see you guys on the next one